Okay, so shading and lighting, uh, just some very basics um, about that. And uh, one good source for shading and lighting is once again idsketching.com. I recommend you guys go there and look at it. And um, Uh, just different colored pencils, if you guys are going to ever use colored pencils. The Prisma colors, the Veritin are a little harder. The Prisma, Prisma colors, the round ones, are a little softer. Um, and then these are just some, a few tips. For example, when you, do, when you shade an object, you shouldn't do um, like terribly contrasty uh, uh, parts, because that doesn't look so good. Um, at the same time, though, when you do your shading, you do want to uh, <coughs> try to keep the contrast between the earlier shading at least twice as much. So, that, for example, one, two, and then this becomes four, so it's double the previous one. Uh, I won't get into how to shade in this particular uh, case, except to say that it's best to do like really defined strokes so that you get a drawing that's really nice and crisp um, rather than filling in completely. <coughs> this also shows how you construct a shadow um, of an object. And I'll show that in a moment since it's a little it's kind of interesting. So in this object what you would do is you would establish where the direction of the light is, and I'm just going to quickly redraw it. Okay, so what you would do is assuming that your light rays are parallel, and that's what we do when we uh, use the sun as a kind of a sort of light source. Um, you would just draw lines that come down at the same angle. And then where these lines hit the floor of the table, um, also when they meet another uh, extension from the base of the object. So in this case we have two sets. One is the light rays and the other is uh, on the floor connecting this angle. Angle like that. So where they meet, that's where the shadow gets defined. Right there. That's a very, very basic. Okay. And it's just another view. And then this is, yeah, this will be on the quiz. So it's, it's just a, a how to name all these different uh, shadows and light. And again, this is from RapidViz. And when you have a cylinder like this, uh, we talk about different type of shadows. One is a core shadow, the darkest one. The shadow that's actually cast on another surface is called a cast shadow. And then you have a, a thing called reflected light, which is kind of this border area between the object, the outside, and the core shadow. And what it does is it offsets the object from, in this case, a cast shadow, and also from the background. Um, and the highlight is opposite your core shadow. And, uh, well, actually, it's not quite opposite. I'll show now in a moment what I mean, where exactly is. But there is a little bit of shadow on the other side as well. And to kind of construct these um, bands, if you will, right? Because they're bands of different light values. Um, let me just highlight that. So that being darkest 
the two next to it lighter and so forth. Although you probably wouldn't construct them as so strongly vertically, but this is just to demonstrate uh, where everything is. Uh, another thing that I did here is add a little bit of shading at the top. It's counterintuitive because the light is coming from the left and the shading is starting also from the left, but it kind of works to give the right side uh, more light in contrast to the shadows on the vertical side. So that's a little bit of a trick. Um, anyway, looking at this, which is the object, and looking at a plan view of that setup, in order to determine where everything is, um, what this shows, and this, by the way, is in idsketching.com. There is a particular demo that shows this. If the light source is from the left, you have a point that's at 45 degrees. If you were to draw opposite lines at 45 degrees above, uh, so it hits the cylinder here and then it gets reflected. And then the shadow, the core, so-called core shadow, is at the, at the other side of the object, okay? Also along this uh, 45 degree uh, direction. Okay, so that's kind of a good way to, um, and that assumes, of course, that you're looking from, from this direction here, right? So the light is from your left. Um, so again, core shadow is on the opposite side of your highlight, and everything else is in between. Uh, the reflected light, uh, I don't know, this could be called a, I don't know, medium shadow maybe? <laughs> uh, and the cast shadow is on the ground. I guess we're just calling that shadow, just plain shadow. Um, so things to remember, the shadow, the highlight, the core shadow, and when you draw something like this, you always want to leave that highlight blank so that the paper becomes the highest light. Um, core shadow, cast shadow, and then reflected light. And you'll see in the other examples why that reflected light is really important. Uh, reflected light just means that there's likely, in all likelihood, there's like another object or maybe there's a wall here and that wall is reflecting a little bit of the light that's in the room in general, okay? Uh, this is again about contour lines which we showed last, we talked about last week. just defining areas of same height, in this case a mountain, uh, and then taking that idea of the contour line to objects uh, to kind of give a sense of their 3D uh, nature, even though it's, they're on paper as, as flat drawings. And so this was my example of using contour lines to define a sphere, let's say a globe, uh, where you can draw the equator and various parallels um, and you can also draw the meridians and I was you know sketching out where Greenwich was Greenwich mean time I guess we're what minus eight minus eight hours Uh, and this is just a quick little trick on how to do a shadow on a sphere. This seems a little bit out of order here. There. Uh, so even though it's flat, all of a sudden we say, oh, okay, that's in front, that's in the back, that's on the left, and that's on the right, and that's on the top, and that's on the bottom. So it's, it's a suggestion of what the shape might be. Uh, and then this is just a quick example of how to do a shadow on a sphere and with this reflected light area, which again becomes really, really important. Uh, even though it's kind of counterintuitive again to say, well, that can be reflecting off the surface because there's a cast shadow here, so it's really dark. So 
what are you saying? Well, it, it does happen actually, but we also emphasize it in our drawing to give the shape a more realistic look. Because if I fill this completely here, then it's all, these two things would just mesh together and it would be just one big blob without any um, three-dimensionality. Okay? Uh, this is also in uh, idsketching.com. They call this shadow a banana-shaped shadow. Um, and that would be the core shadow of the object. And the cast shadow, again, reflected light and the highlight. And actually the highlight, funny enough here, it's shown as a little blob. Again, because if you're using just, say, one pencil, in order for that to be highlight, say, white, I would have to bring all my shading all the way up there. But I don't want to do that because it's going to be too dark. And so, again, we're using a counterintuitive intuitive device, which is making a little shadow to give a sense of a highlight. So for the, um, for the quiz, once again, the terms to remember are the ones in this, um, in this little diagram, okay? Cast shadow, reflected light, core shadow, highlight, and shadow.